oh right, you're going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic error which denies that Jesus Christ died for everybody. You see, in Calvinism, and especially in hyper-Calvinism, they deny the fact that Jesus Christ died for the whole world, and they say he only died for the elect. And they take certain scriptures out of context, like in John chapter 10, they'll take verses in Ephesians 5 out of context uh, to prove this heresy. But I'm going to go through some clear scriptures that, that debunk this Calvinistic error, which denies that Jesus Christ died for, for everyone and not just the elect. So, like I said, the scriptures clearly teach that Jesus Christ died for everyone. I proved that in past videos. But here is just a recap of some of these verses. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9 says, But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crown, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Clear as day. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 15. For the love of Christ constrain, uh, constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again, died for all. Plain uh, again, clear as day. First uh, Timothy chapter two, verses four to six. First Timothy two, verses four to six who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. First uh, John chapter two, verses one to two. Boa, stop meowing. You know, might be able to hear my cat start meowing. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That right there debunks this whole, that, that right there demolishes this idea that he only died for the elect. Because he is a propitiation not for our sins only, referring to you know, saved people, but also for the sins of the whole world. And also John chapter 1, verse number 29. John 1, 29. The next day John seeth Jesus, Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the, land of, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, not just the elect. Uh, like, like, like that verse clearly says, you know, he taketh away the sin of the world. And the scriptures clearly teach that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, not just of the elect. Okay? Uh, that doesn't negate the fact that you have to believe on Christ, but it doesn't, you know, here's how it works. Salvation is available to all, but it's not effective unless you believe on Christ. That, that's what I'm trying to say there. Because they'll accuse you of universalism if you deny their heresy of Jesus Christ only dying for the elect. But the scriptures clearly teach that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 7 to 9. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the one that that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Again, clear as day right there. John chapter twelve verses forty six to forty seven. John twelve verses forty six to forty seven. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth in me, on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. You know, where, where do you find only the elect there? No, it's the world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 14. 1 John 4, verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, not just of the elect. And John chapter 4, verse 42. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world, not just of the elect. Again, uh, the scriptures clearly teach that salvation is available to everybody. You can see that in Romans chapter 10, verse 11 to 13. Uh, you can see kind of a typology of that in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Also, you can see this in John chapter 3, verse 14 to 18, and Acts chapter 10, verse 43. The fact that, that salvation is available to everybody. You know, it's as clear as day. You see, salvation is available to everybody. That doesn't mean everybody is saved, though, because Calvinists like to accuse you of universalism if you deny that their heresy of Christ dying for everyone, like I said earlier. 
So he, he made salvation available to all, but it's not effective unless you make the, the decision of your own free will, by the way, too, to believe on Christ. The scriptures also clearly teach that God is calling all to repentance and doesn't you know, desire that any sinners perish. You can see that in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 to 31, and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. But these are verses that seem to make it, that seem to really be overlooked by most Calvinists, or seem that they'll, they'll try to twist their way around that or use their eisegesis, because they can't they can't stand the fact that God is not a respecter of persons when it comes to salvation. It really comes down to an issue of pride. These Calvinists think, well, look at me, I'm the elect. You know, it comes down to an issue of pride. Uh, they can't stand the idea that God, you know, that Jesus Christ died for everybody because it hurts their pride. That's, that's what it comes down to. Pride is really the, the most deadly sin out there. Because pride is what keeps a lost man from getting saved. Pride is what, you know, keeps a saved man from, from you know, taking correction and admitting he's wrong. That's what it comes down to. And the heresy, the Calvinist error of Jesus Christ busy not dying for everybody, other than denying the fact that Jesus Christ died for everybody, is thoroughly refuted in these verses and many others too, by the way. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.